okay so we had understood about the basics of kubernetes that what exactly it's going to do so if i give you a, a review of the first video in this series or in this playlist we had just learned that the world is moving towards microservices and to manage microservices we need to understand docker and we need to understand kubernetes the applications will be coming in the form of containers rather than in the form of a rpm or a exe file that uh, the traditional way which we used to see now let's move ahead a slight background and i am giving you a couple of examples to make you understand the importance of kubernetes and what exactly kubernetes does this is main thing i have seen people just just doing the like installation of creating the pods do the do this do that and they don't understand the uh, individual components how the components fits in together that is i think is more important and i hope you will agree so let's move further right so kubernetes is a orchestrator now we need to understand what is a orchestrator what it does orchestrator as the name says itself it coordinates between a lot of components right i'll give you a simple example i'll give you a very simple example i'll not one i'll give you two examples of what kubernetes does so right now for now the kubernetes is a orchestrator it orchestrate between different components to help everything work smoother so orchestrator as it the name says it always run in the background right it is it uh, the like the orchestrator is responsible for uh, making sure that your applications are running the machines on which they are running are healthy if something is is going wrong they there should be a mechanism to reward those things and the application should always be healthy so these things are being automatically being controlled by the orchestrator without me or you as the admin going to interfere in daily basis right so they are here to manage the cloud native applications i have already told you cloud native application means application which is a small independent service and which can communicate with other services right i'll be coming on to it in much more details obviously it it and uh, a lot of you already knows i guess that kubernetes is actually a google project and now in 2014 it is being handed over to cncf cloud native computing foundation so kubernetes and dockers are complementary remember one thing that's why i told you that you should have a uh, prior knowledge of docker so that you will be able to understand the kubernetes so docker is actually going to deploy the application kubernetes is the one who is instructing him hey what to do what not to do i'll give you one example here so remember one thing guys kubernetes is a high level technology it's control everything like if you remember independence day movie like the earth is being attacked by a alien a huge alien mothership right and the mothership has got a lot of child ships shak 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 they go and kill people right but everything is controlled by the mothership right so let's check a uh, picture of the mothership hey let's check it out if i google here independence day movie mothership i'll you will get an idea of mothership launching child ships okay if you remember this i'll go to the images here i yeah so this was the mothership i suppose that's the huge mothership right so this mothership used to send a lot of small small ships right and the control and where those motherships will be going with sorry wrong uh, i'm expecting a picture here right, right. so this mud this this mothership controls right that which ships will be going there what what they are doing so this is the high level thing high level it was above in the sky and the child ships were going here like attacking statue of liberty and everything i hope you remember if you don't remember just go back and see the movie amazing movie right so coming back here so uh not this one this right so kubernetes is the high level technology that controls everything actual work will be done by the docker so that is why docker 
you should be aware of docker how the docker works so docker is the low level technology something like this so i have got multiple machines every machine will be be running docker 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 and the whole con whole cluster of 10 15 20 nodes is being managed by the kubernetes cluster right so that's why docker is important and number one thing it is being pronounced as kubernetes kubernetes right it's a it's a greek word which means houseman that means the person who like steer the ship remember jack sparrow so jack sparrow we can say jack sparrow is a kubernetes he controls where the ship is going or what what strategy we have to take to defeat what was the other guy name uh, barbosa yes barbosa i'll give you one more example here uh, how it works something like this just a minute i have a picture for you i i have a picture i have a picture yeah so kubernetes has got two major components remember master consider it as independence day mothership controlling everything right every child ships where we have to attack what we have to do is being controlled by the mothership that's why guys if you remember the movie when the mothership goes down all the child ships goes away they just drop dead they cannot be controlled so they are not able to do anything so that's how the mothership is the kubernetes the master and nodes the child ships are the actual machines on which the docker is installed and they are running the application something like this something like this so i'll be coming on to it i'll give you a very uh, beautiful picture which will explain you so when i say docker when i say docker docker means docker means 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 this a ship a standalone ship perfect the ship is very good it's it's a warship you know how to handle the ship right so when you learn docker you learn how to manage a single ship but you cannot win a war with this for winning a war you need a fleet that is kubernetes a cluster of machines and is controlled by uh, say the one mothership right the mothership gives instruction what need to be done by the like aircraft carrier what need to be done by the submarine destroyer what need to be done by the frigates means every piece of communication will be going through the mothership so we consider this one as the mothership right so every ship has got different roles one is like these two here are the aircraft carriers so they will be taking care of any like air attacks or like uh, giving us a uh, a safety cover a couple of them will be uh, be re like responsible for handling the submarines a couple of them will be handling like responsible for taking care of the like other ships right so this is a fleet a fleet is a kubernetes which is being controlled by the mothership mothership will be instructing every other ship what to do what not to do what is the strategy they cannot work independently and the and if there is a problem in any any of the ship they need to tell it update it to the to the mothership right that boss that like admiral i'm having this problem so the like right then the the like admiral will be saying okay fine you will do something else whatever same thing guys happens here so the whole kubernetes cluster is divided into two major parts right one is the master the mothership another are the workers let me make it full screen perfect much better so this is it right so the workers are the actual ships which is handling your or uh, running your application consider them as the ships the mothership controls everything what and where and what to do where to attack what not to do what what kind of weapons to carry everything will be done by the mothership every ship will have a captain right so we have a service run, uh, running on every node we call it kubelet kubelet is the captain of the ship it is the it is the responsible or it is the responsibility of the captain that he should be talking to the mothership no other employee or no other uh, officer on the ship can talk to the mother to the mothership so kubelet and the and the mothership also will be talking to the kubelet so kubelet is one service remember this which will be running on every node and the job of the kubelet is to talk to the mothership 
or the Kubernetes cluster. And on every machine, or sorry, on every node, here we have got ships. On every ship, the intra-ship communication, the communication between all the ships, right? The communication between the ships is being handled by a service known as Kube Proxy. So this also runs on all the nodes. And the Docker obviously is your container runtime, which will also be running on all the machines, all the nodes. Okay. And then on the master, this is the master. Here. On the master, we have got services like Cube API server, which is responsible for all the communication. Every piece of communication will be going through the API server. Consider it as the as the command center or the wireless center of, of the ship, right? Every communication has to be going through the API server. Then on the mothership, we have got a service known as controller manager, which will be controlling all the things. How many nodes we have got? Do we have to do replication? Do, do we have to take care of like the power and all the things? So those things are being man is being managed by the controller manager. Then we have got the scheduler, the mothership, Consider mothership is Kubernetes, right? Independent ships are your nodes. The ho whole picture becomes a Kubernetes cluster, right? Then on the mothership or on the Kubernetes, we have, uh, I think I've, I've got a hangover of the mothership and the independent state. Okay, coming back. So we have another service running that is Kube Scheduler. So Scheduler will tell that what kind of weapon need to be carried on which ship, what kind of container need to be carried on which ship or which node based on their CPU, based on their RAM. So let me give you a simple example. So if this machine is having say eight, only 8 GB of RAM, so I cannot put a container or I, or I cannot run a container on this machine which requires 9 GB of RAM, right? So which node is suitable to run that particular container is being done by the cube scheduler. And whatever we are doing or whatever we are done, that information is being kept in etcd. etcd is the database where the Kubernetes stores everything about the cluster. What is happening in, happening in the cluster? Which ship is doing what? How many nodes are running? How many containers are running on which node? The status, everything is being maintained in a database known as the etcd cluster. I'll be explaining uh, on it in detail, but not right now. I hope you understand the basic architecture. I'll give you one more example of Kubernetes. Uh, this one is my fav is favorite, right? So as I've told you, Kubernetes has two things, a cluster, which is running application and it also serves as the orchestrator. Consider the Kubernetes as a, as a coach if you are not comfortable with the aliens. So we have a football team. A football team has got players. Some of the players are good in attack. Some are good in defense. Some are very good in midfield. They can play at their own positions. Perfect. Some tackle, some shoot, some are goalkeepers, right? But which player will be my current 11 today, right? The top 11. Who will choose that? The coach. Depending up upon which team we are against, right? So this is my favorite picture, my favorite football team, Germany. So the winning team, right? The World Cup team, right? So these are the players. So it's my Kubernetes cluster. But the players don't know which position I have to play. Should I be playing a defender or a midfield or a like attacker? Should I be playing on left flank or right flank? Who will choose that? Who will choose that my my first or the like the playing 11 will be this? The coach, Joachim Low. He will choose it. He will choose where, where, like whether uh, Muller will play or not. Right. Thomas Cruz will be playing or not. Right. So it is the responsibility of the coach. Coach is Kubernetes. Coach will decide which position or what node will be doing what kind of role. Coach will decide my top 11 or the playing 11 depending upon the team that we are, we are against, right? So consider it. So coach also maintains the formation. Coach also maintains or take care of, of like injuries. If one player has got a like injury, whom to replace? In the same manner, if one node goes down, which node I should be sending my 
uh, containers that should be done by the Kubernetes. Kubernetes manages everything. So whatever is the coach in the football, right, a mothership or uh, like uh, the kind of admiral ship in a navy fleet. Here we have got Kubernetes, which is managing all those things. So remember that thing. Right, Kubernetes is an orchestrator. Now I hope you know what do you mean by orchestrator. Who is an orchestrator? Right. So again, I'll repeating once again. My cluster will have two components: master and node. Master will only coordinate, control, and the actual workers' job is being done by the nodes. In a production setup, guys, remember one thing, as I have told you in the first video, we will be focusing how the things are done in the production, not in that only at the, for the learning purpose. So in a production setup, it is being recommended that you should have your masters in high availability. Think of it, what happened in Independence Day, they have got only one mothership. And when that mothership goes down, they lost the war and we won. Yeah, as usual, right? Perfect. But if they have got more than one motherships, then the second mothership might be taken the right the place, and they they might be controlling the all the all those child ships, right? Those uh, terrible ships there, right? So in the in the production, your master should always be running in high availability. That is a must. And there are multiple ways, or there are multiple platforms where you can run your Kubernetes cluster. It can be Amazon Web Services or Azure or Google Cloud. You can run it anywhere. So, as a rule of production, you should have minimum three to five masters, which is highly recommended. It is never allowed to run a single master because if that master goes down, your cluster will go down no matter how many nodes you have got. I hope you are getting my point. If the coach is not there, then the team doesn't know what to do. No matter how great the players are, coach the coach matters, right? So remember that Kubernetes picture, this one. This is, you should remember this one. These are the services which are running on the masters. On your uh, left hand side and on your right hand side are the workers I'll just repeat once again because I, I've seen people they have got no idea what the service is is doing they just do yum install kubernetes yum install kubelet I don't want you to do that so on the nodes we have got major three services running docker 100% the job of the docker is to actually build the container right Q proxy communication between the pods and communication between the nodes kubelet communication with the mastership right or the kubernetes master that is to be done by the kubelet on the mothership or on the kubernetes master you have got hcd cluster which which records everything what is going on in my network which node is active which is not active how many pods are running replica set everything means whatever is going on in in your cluster is being recorded in hcd cluster so i think you are getting me now you should have multiple copies of hcd cluster if the hcd cluster goes down no matter how good your nodes are right so your database is is hcd cluster scheduler is the service which will control which pod or which controller we don't say con uh, con uh, containers here we say pods i'll be coming on to it in the next video why we say it pod why not containers in docker we used to say it containers but now we, we have changed the name to pod perfect so which pod is going on which node which pod should be running which pod is pending the status everything as the name says scheduler it's schedule the controller manager will be controlling everything your replications and your nodes and all the things right api server is the service which is, is responsible for communication between all other services so every piece of communication will be going through the api server so master your left hand top master will manage plan schedule and monitor the nodes actual job hosting the application as containers is being done by worker nodes so this whole constitute your k8 as cluster or kubernetes cluster
right so if you are good in that you understood the concepts perfect guys then we will be moving on to the next part and we'll be seeing how can i install it that will be the next part right so i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye take care godspeed